I used to visit all the very gay places. I was drawn to Lush Life quite a few years ago. It's a beautiful standard written by Billy Strayhorn. I think that it's one of the most beautiful compositions of the 20th century. I always really loved it and wanted to sing it, and I remember that I had a teacher at Berklee College of Music when I was studying voice. I was 21 at the time and she was like, you're too young, you're too young to sing that song. You haven't experienced real pain yet, so you can't connect with that song. And I remember feeling kind of rebellious about that and kind of pissed off. And yet, um, I did put the song on the back burner. I didn't sing it. There was sort of this voice in my head saying, mm, maybe she's a little bit right about that. And then, you know, maybe about two years ago, I was in France. Um, going through a bit of a strange emotional time and the song kind of came back into my life and I sat down with it for the first time and actually worked through it and played through it on the guitar and I could connect with the song in a new way and I felt like it was time for me to perform the song in the way that that I wanted to perform it. I thought for a while that your poignant smile was of a great love for me uh, We recorded Lush Life at Paramount Recording Studios in Hollywood. We recorded in their big beautiful Studio C room. We ended up getting in there and kind of dusting off some of their gear that hadn't been touched in a while and we were the first singer-songwriter session that they'd had in quite a long time. Upright bass is my favorite instrument. Um, I always love to play duo, upright bass and voice. It's something that I think is just really beautiful and, and really freeing uh, because of the lack of harmonic content kind of happening. And I also was just having this love affair at the time with the harp, um, such a beautiful instrument that I hadn't really utilized much before in my music, but was really excited to utilize. And so I knew in order for me to really perform the lyrics properly, I wouldn't want to be playing guitar, I would want to just be singing so that I could have that freedom to really just be hyper-focused on the words and the storytelling. I thought for a while that your poignant smile was tinged with the sadness A flat seven of a great love for me B uh, B flat Right, yeah, so I think that's what I want to hear. Can you just do it by yourself, like slowly and like do the whole yeah. phrase, please? So I knew I wanted to try voice, upright bass, and harp as a trio. Brittany Carlson was the bass player on Lush Life and throughout the rest of the album. Brittany is equally well versed in jazz and singer-songwriter and folk and roots. She's very versatile and she's very emotional in the way that she plays and she's just an incredible listener and just a dear friend. Lara Samoji was the harpist. Lara is just one of the most unique musicians that I've ever met. She is brilliant as a musician. She's also very unique in the sense that she, you know, also isn't boxed in by genre. She explores a lot of different ways of playing the harp. There's definitely parts where I can do way more, like there's like... Uh, that, that the chords do work with the passing chords. You know? Many people have asked me why I chose uh, Lush Life, a song written by Billy Strayhorn, a man, uh, for an album that centers around femininity. It just felt like a feminine song. The, the story that's being told, the way that the melody ebbs and flows, it just, it always had a really feminine quality to me. But secondly, Billy Strayhorn was a man who was very in touch with his feminine side. He was a queer man in jazz at a time when that was absolutely taboo. With all of the reading that I've done about Billy Strayhorn, his life, his musical relationship with Duke Ellington. Billy Strayhorn was really the feminine to Duke Ellington's masculine. That's how Duke Ellington described their relationship. That's how many people described what they saw from the outside. That is the point of this album, is femininity wherever it comes from. So it just felt natural to me and it really wasn't a question. I felt like it perfectly fit in with the body of work. 
The song is sad, the song is sorrowful, um, the song is melancholy, it doesn't leave you on an upper <laughs> necessarily, and I ended the album with Lush Life because that's where I was in my own life. I didn't really know what was next for me in terms of my feminism, in terms of my relationships with men, in terms of my art. Um, I made this album, I released a lot of emotions and a lot of sadness and empowerment that I was feeling and the song is quite simple in its arrangement and it's sparse and it leaves space to breathe um, and oftentimes those are the things that last the longest in my heart. Ooh.